Aloha everybody, uh, this is Jim, and just an update on my uh, aquaponics dual loop system. It's been about a week or a week and a half, I guess, since I posted a, an update on the whole system. Um, some changes I made, I added more filtration, I um, put in a, uh, a valve so that the uh, water from the fish side can drain into the uh, plant side twice a day without me having to deal with it. So I just hooked it up to my sprinkler system. Thank you, Mr. Vanderwerf, for that uh, tip. And uh, it's working great so far. It drains about five gallons each time. So for a total of 10 gallons. Now all I gotta do is work on another valve to go the other way uh, from my tap water into my fish system. But I gotta figure out a way to condition it first. Um, most likely I'll probably just get another 55 gallon drum fill it up, uh, condition the water, and then uh, put a valve between that and the, uh, the fish side sump tank and just do, do that. Um, I think that would probably be the easiest method. Then I only have to deal with filling up the 55-gallon <clears throat> drum once every, I don't know, 10 days, I guess. Five, five gallons at a shot, or once every five days. So that's still a lot easier than hauling around five-gallon uh, buckets full of water and dumping them in by by hand now I can just take a hose over and and spray it in there and fill it up and use the conditioner and get rid of the chlorine and the heavy metals and do it that way uh, I'm not even sure if there is any heavy metals in our water in our drinking water it's pretty good water so um, that's what I've been working on I also update uh, let you look what the plants are doing um, they've gotten pretty big pretty quickly and then um, Sometime further on down the line, I'm, I'm actually wanting to put in some kind of a, uh, a sand bed. I've read up on those um, on the Aquaponics Nation's website, and um, they're supposed to be pretty good. So I'd like to throw one in. I had a problem with sourcing the sand. It has to be between 500 and 1500 um, microns. <clears throat> but I found out that the coral sand I have is a mixture of coral and um, quartz. And actually, it's it's fairly coarse. Um, I can sift out the really fa uh, fine stuff. It'll be kind of labor intensive, but it's a one one time you know endeavor. And then I can fill up my uh, my uh, sand bed that way. So that's sometime down the line. I don't know when I'll get around to that, but uh, that's something I definitely want to try. So I'll go ahead and uh, and uh, end this and show you my uh, my system and uh, what's going on so far. Okay, so let's start with the, the fish tank and the fishes. Um, the fish tank has been steady at around, in the morning, 7.4 uh, pH, and then as the day wears on, like toward the evening, it, it goes on to 7. Uh, I'm not sure why it swings like that. It's not a big swing, but the fish don't seem to mind, um, and so I'm not going to worry too much about it. The, um, the, Nitrites and uh, ammonia levels are pretty good. Uh, they're low, 2.25 to 5, um, but it's still cycling. So I'm just gonna ignore it and let it go, and I think it'll it'll decrease even further to the point where I hope the ammonia levels are zero. But right now I'm not too alarmed by them. I haven't done any buffering or anything, and I don't plan to unless things get really crazy. So. Um, the water is still clean and clear. Algae is minimal. Very little algae. Maybe because I have it under this tarp. Probably because I have it under this tarp. I'm still using my 8 inch uh, air stones and I'm also using my Venturi tube. Uh, down there you can't see it but uh, it's down there. You can see the bubbles coming up. Water's real clear. Uh, due to the um, excessive filtration that I've got. Um, you can see I've got uh, this one which is uh, dirty there. I change it out this morning. I change it out twice a day. And this is just an in-tank filter. For those of you that haven't seen any videos of mine, this is a two inch PVC pipe with uh, pearl sand in it. It's a uh, coarse, probably between 500 and 1500 microns. I sifted out all the fine stuff, coarse stuff in there. And it goes up and in the bottom of that tank is a little 70 gallon per hour uh, fountain pump and that's what pumps the water 
and that gets most of the solids out of this tank. Uh, my, see my pump is still pumping. Uh, hasn't missed a beat. And it's doing well. The uh, rate of flow filter, I added a filter. I uh, used a buffer pad. It's a 24 inch diameter buffer, buffer pad. Um, I stuck it between the, uh, the wall of the tank and the bucket. So that it's about here. So that the water coming up, or uh, I should work, it's about here. So the water coming up to go out actually is filtered. So that's working out pretty good. And then there's my, my bio filter. And it's running good. Should have took all these lids off, I guess. Um, again, I have an 8 inch air stone in there along with a Venturi. There's a Venturi inside the tank, and that's the, the air inlet for the Venturi. It's bubbling and doing its thing, and the, the media is looking a healthy gray color. Oh. And then the uh, the sieve filter is doing really well, and it's got 100 micron screens in there. And that water that uh, or the solids roll down the screen go into that little trough, and then they go out the barrel, the side there, and then they go in there. And I got two socks. Again, they're uh, 100 micron socks. And I have a little green tackle box. It's the bottom of a tackle box that I cut up. And that way when I want to change the socks, I just pull the whole thing out. I put a sock over here, and I pull this out, clean them up, put it back in. Uh, easy to do. And then I've also got a sock down there as you can see so coming in from the bucket going back in there just before it goes out um, into the sump it just filtered again and then in the sump I also have a sock these are all 100 micron socks and that filters out even more so as you can see I'm serious about uh, about filtering the other change I made here was I added this um, solenoid valve, little three-quarter inch solenoid valve, and that's hooked up to my uh, sprinkler system. So twice a day in the morning and in the afternoon at 7 o'clock a.m. and p.m. It uh, turns on for one minute, and that allows the... Uh, that allows the water to flow from my radio flow filter right there. It goes down through the valve and into my mineralization tank. This is on the plant side now. And as you can see my screen is It goes into this tank and then down there there's a venturi tube inside the tank that aerates it and then that water obviously right there goes into my main sump tank right there okay so and the main sump tank is where the pump is and you can see that's where the mineralization tank water comes in it's constantly flowing because I've got the uh, venturi running so it's just going around, round robin. And there's my my mixing, settling tank flow coming into the main. And there's my pump down there in the bottom. So, and it goes out. The pump's out of here. Goes down into the venturi for, runs the venturi for the mineralization, comes up, and then goes that way and empties into these three beds and then there's also a half inch hose that comes around goes around that way and that feeds the dutch bucket system and then there's drain there two inch drain for the beds and then another two inch drain here to go back into the uh, little sump tank or the mixing uh, settling tank right there 
that's where I put my hydroponic stuff in there, my uh, fertilizers and stuff. And so, pretty simple, but boy, it works great so far. Um, as you can see, uh, maybe it was a week and a half ago that I showed you guys the plants, and they were a lot smaller. You can see how big they've gotten. Some of them have really gone crazy. So there's my cucumbers. And there's a good what, eight inch one there. It's still growing. Uh, I've got a variety of tomato plants. And this is my only failure. It's a snow, snow pea plant and it just never took off. From the very beginning it just never uh, never did well. I don't know if I want to try another one or try to figure out what's going on with that. I'll have to look that up online. Uh, another tomato plant. That's a brandy wine. All my tomato plants are different kinds as is most of my stuff because I'm kind of experimenting. That's a little eggplant. That is a pepper plant. Um, as I recall, it's a sweet pepper. This is the uh, red pear tomato plant. That's getting crazy. I haven't been trimming it. I guess I should. Um, and this is another brandy wine here. And then this little one I just put in not too long ago. And it's starting to come along. It was I'm doing too good where I had it before, so I stuck it in there, and now it's, it's looking a lot better. I had it uh, in a pot. Um, in this last bed over here, I've got some uh, bean. Uh, this is pole pimento, and I'm not even sure what kind this one is. Forgot, actually. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's just going up. It's continuing to go. This is the Okinawan sweet potato. These are good, from what I understand, in salads. Although I haven't tried it yet, but uh, look forward to it. This thing really goes crazy when they start growing. Those are uh, bitter melon plants, two of them. They'll go way up there too. I've had those in the past. Uh, strawberries. The birds eat the strawberries, so I you know, don't get any. My contribution, I guess. Uh, those little things are lettuce plants that I just threw seeds in there recently. Um, that back there is another brandy wine tomato plant. That I just stuck in there and um, that one back there is a yard long bean plant that really doesn't seem to be doing too well for some reason now I had uh, a problem with uh, my my siphons and it really wasn't with the siphons it was with uh, lack of air in the drain so these things weren't filling all the way up as you can see right now they are I could put more I need to put more uh, rocks lava rocks in there but they weren't filling up all the way and um, that was causing a problem with the plants. They weren't growing, they weren't getting enough water. So, uh, scratching my head, it was just these two here that were both doing the same thing. Um, and I realized that uh, there was probably not a good drain and it was causing these things to prematurely um, siphon. So I put an air tube right here in the drain and that solved the problem. Now they fill up all the way and, and siphon all the way like they're supposed to. So premature siphoning, it's a bad thing. Um, then I got some spinach there. You see how big some of them are compared to others. Why they grow like that, I have no idea. I just crowded a whole bunch of stuff in here. Uh, onions, uh, basil, bees like it. Yeah, there's a bee right there. Um, this is a lettuce leaf basil. That's kale right there. These are some rescues here that I, I got. They're almost dead. Now they're going like crazy. I put them in there a couple days ago. Uh, I can see algae starting to grow. I have to take care of that. Um, cabbage and Chinese cabbage and this is uh, just regular cabbage and another brandy wine tomato plant and then uh, romaine lettuce again these were these were uh, these were hurting because of the siphon problems now they're starting to come back I just fixed that about two days ago and then my Hawaiian sweet corn um, boy that's really taken off I mean, all of a sudden these things just started going crazy. Okay, and then I got uh, oh, back there in the back. What is that? It's um, a basil lemon. I mean, a lemon basil. I'm not sure what the difference is. It smells like regular basil to me, but <laughs> the bees like it. 
and then they got a uh, habanero pepper plant. A couple of them. And there's a Tabasco pepper plant right here. And then uh, this is a green green onion, bell boy. And then another Chinese cabbage plant. That's really starting to get crazy big. So that's it. Um, so far, so good. The only thing I've put in here so far is I put a little bit of tomato fertil or hydroponic tomato um, fertilizer in the tank. I didn't put full strength. I put half strength <coughs> just to see how it would do. So how that's going to affect the other plants, I really don't have a clue. It may help or it may hurt them. I guess I'll find out. But this is the great experiment, so um, I'll, just, I'll learn from doing it. But that's it. And eventually I want to put a sand bed in here. And um, I'll have to do the, the, the filtering of the sand. It's got to be coarse sand, like the sand I've got in my filter. So I'll... Uh, I'll be thinking about constructing that and the other thing I want to do since I have an automated way of going from um, the the uh, fish tank to the plant side every day and I don't have to deal with that now I want to figure out how I made a way to fill up refill the water refresh the water in the fish side so that's something I'm gonna to have to deal with I'll probably put some kind of a 55 gallon barrel system up they can drain directly into that little sump tank right there. And um, I'll put a valve on it similar to the one I've got down there and, and uh, to replenish the water every day. And then that way everything will be automated. My only hurdle there is I'll have to condition the tap water because I use tap water that's conditioned. So um, that's my only hurdle. And I'll probably start working on that pretty soon. And once I do that, I really won't have to do much of anything except monitor the uh, you know the water conditions and uh, adjust as necessary everything else will be pretty much automated so that's it uh, any questions or comments i'll try to answer them if i can <laughs> aloha